I'm not too worried about a runaway diesel or anything since, you know, I mean, I guess that'd be kind of fun. Today is gonna be a video on this Chevy C70. It's gonna, we'll do a tour and then hopefully it will it run. It's got a Detroit two-stroke diesel, manual trans. It looks to be maybe an old moving truck and in decent shape really, but it's destined to be cut up for scrap in the next few days. And I talked to the guy who has claimed ownership of it. Uh, he actually was here the other day trying to, to drag it out with a tow truck that was probably a little bit too small for this beast. and didn't have great luck. And so I was talking to him and I said, man, this has got the two stroke Detroit diesel. Maybe I could mess around with it. And he gave me the green light, said, yeah, do whatever you want. I'm gonna be there at the end of the uh, weekend to, to cut it up. So I don't know how far this video will go, but let's take a gander around, show you a tour, and then we'll pop the hood and see if there's any chance of firing this up. Uh, these doors are aluminum with wood behind them. And that's just some, some storage in here. Again, decent shape. Well, I'll show you the frame and stuff. I actually didn't look at it, but I can tell she's sitting square. We got rusted through in the back on the bottom. There goes all your tools down the road, right? Somebody left the gas cap off the tank, and that looks, you guys probably can't see it, but this actually has a sleeper on it too, which I couldn't get this door open, but I'll show you on the inside. Very, very cool. Decent tires. I mean, look at the tread on it. It's a brand new tire with zero dry rod. Well, oh, it's dry rod on the bottom, but never really got much sunlight on the top. I mean, brand new 30 years ago, right? Ah, uh, somebody already took the batteries out of it, but nice easy access to, to drop some Optimas in there and get her cranking. Last sticker on it was 1991. So yeah, about 30 years. Public mover, 1988, 19, yep, 1991. Look at that. Pop inside of here. All right, look at these. Oh, this thing smells amazing. I love it. Nice big old steering wheel. Right, look at the gauges. Bring back memories to some of you guys that probably used to drive this exact truck. Uh, I'm sure there's still some on the road, but not too many. So I don't know what transmission is in this, but it shifts good. Looks like it's got a splitter. And uh, I don't know if we'll be rowing gears. Uh, here's the sleeper on this. That is so cool. It's got the between the cab and here. Somebody you know cut this open years ago, folded that, and then put the little join in piece. And uh, uh, I mean, something else was definitely living in here, but <laughs> there's that door on the outside. So that's just a, a vent fan. Leave it open when you're going down the road, keep fresh air back there. Smoke detector, and that's about it in here. It's a really nasty looking bed. I get the radio box up here. Look at that. Oh, this is awesome. Oh, it takes a cassette too. It's got a GVW of 25,500 pounds. This side does have a cap. Smells like diesel. Maybe a tank in there, just about empty. I wonder if the other side's cap is missing. It's a nice old brass cap. You don't see those anymore. There's the vent on the other side of the sleeper. Let's see if there's anything in these boxes. Nothing here. Let's put this thing open. Oh, yeah, this door is working. Like the day they were new. Wow, it is dry in here. This is a really nice truck. The ceiling doesn't look like it's been leaking at all. It's got a little clear fiberglass piece there for keeping some light in here. Nice finish on the wood. And then you got the, the D-rings or whatever it is they're called. Big doors on the back. This could make just, well, I guess it couldn't be a car hauler. You'd have to raise the floor up or something. But yeah, I mean, this could be totally a car hauler. Let's, let's check out the underneath. Got my working pad. Heck yeah, that's coming with me. Looks like this has got air brakes on it. Super heavy duty C-channel frame. It's in excellent condition. I mean, it actually looks like it was undercoated at one point too. This is definitely all undercoated and, and people usually don't like the spray on rubber stuff, but look at that. That protected the frame very nicely. I mean, that's, can't argue with that. 
wood floors coming through. So I guess it probably was getting some water in around the doors more than likely. But the rest of this floor is solid. Certainly needs tires, yeah. And uh, I suppose it makes sense why that guy couldn't drag it out because with the air brakes, you know, those are gonna be locked up till you get air pressure in the system. I mean, they'll probably stay locked up even if you do get air since you know, when those drum brakes get a little bit of surface rust on them, it's, uh, it's tough to break them loose. A lot of contact area on the drum brakes versus the disc brakes getting seized up. You just smack the caliper with a hammer a few times, good to go. Well, it's actually got true dual exhaust. I didn't notice that until just now. Here's a little glance at the transmission and the bottom of the engine. Looks decent enough under there. Now let's pop this hood open. I've never worked on one of these Detroit diesels. Here's the air filter. Looks like a fuel filter right there. And uh, here's a look. So if one of you guys know, but based on the pictures I was seeing, this is a 6V53 and I don't see a turbo on it. So that would be a 6V53T. Very cool engine though. And I've heard of them. I've just never actually driven one or worked on one. These are generally known as noisemakers, making more noise than actual power. Look at that little blow off valve on the uh, intake or something. Hmm, interesting. Let's check the oil level. Oh yeah, we got oil. That was about an inch above the full mark, which generally indicates possible water intrusion and the water will push the oil up. But I mean, I don't see how any water would have gotten in here. And quite frankly, I'm not too worried about it. So maybe we'll just throw some batteries on it and see if it cranks over. Of course, man, I can't get her in there. Of course, you would want to hand crank the engine first, always. Do we even have a key in here? I didn't look. Um, it's got the ether switch. Caution ether, one shot only. Psh, psh. Well, there's the ignition switch. Yeah, no key, but easy access for jump starting it. How about these pedals? Air brake moves, throttle moves. Clutch, mm, it's not good, but this probably has a cable clutch, so that's no big deal. Don't mind the mess in here. It's, uh, it's working on the Cat 977 doing a will it run, and that one's on hold right now for various reasons. Uh, but we got these two Optimus charged up. Let's hook them up, see what happens. Oh, totally too small for this thing, but let's see what they can do. It's a nice working pad, but man, does it get hot in the sun. Oh, look at that, the bottom of the radiator is actually steel. Okay, got those wired up. I assume it's 12 volts because it had two jumper leads, so it'd only have one if it was wired in series. But got the power probe on there. Let's go see if the motor budges at all. According to the back of this ignition switch, we should have power right here. We do. This should be the starter. Yep, we got a grounds. We got good continuity. Sorry about the noise. Let's give it a jolt. See what happens. Jolt of power. Oh, yeah, there it goes. Woo! Okay, all right. You know what? It does rotate. The oil's overfilled. Let's just see what's on the bottom, because if there's water in that pan, then it sucks it up. It makes a big milky mess. And yeah, we're gonna do that first. There shouldn't be any water in here, but you never know when, when engines sit, sometimes the condensation builds up on the walls of the inside of the engine and then as the temperature changes, it condensates, it comes down. Nope, we got straight oil. Excellent. Oh, nope. We're ready to crank it and then get some fuel. I'm not too worried about a runaway diesel or anything since, you know, I mean, I guess that'd be kind of fun. <laughs> and it's just going to scrap anyway as of this point. We're gonna give it a good crank over now and see what happens. Really should not do that before disconnecting the fuel system, getting fresh diesel in there, maybe checking what's in the filter. But yeah, it's kind of neat to do videos sometimes and just see like, hey, would this start if you put power to it? Probably not, but let's see what the compression sounds like. Crank it over. Wow. We have a runner, and I even hear it building up air pressure in the back. <laughs> oh man! I was just talking to the owner of this yard, and he said this was driven in. So that's what kind of gave me confidence. I was like, yeah, these diesels are pretty tough. Look at this, I just noticed. Whoever says you can't paint rust, oh, you can't paint right on top of rust. 
Look at that, it held up good. Now that we saw it started, uh, it'd be really silly to not chase this line uh, hose back and dunk it in a fresh bucket of diesel, or at least make sure this tank's out of the equation since there's definitely water sitting on there and it might run for a minute and then it's gonna pull water in there and shut off and create a mess. There's a donor wasp nest around here too. This guy keeps coming out. He's guarding his nest in there. So I gotta be kind of careful. I'm not trying to get lit up. And sorry, I left my light up there, but yeah, the fuel hose comes down and dumps into this water separator. So actually we'll just crack this and make sure pff, no water's um, getting in. Uh, yeah, that's, that's diesel. No, there is water mix in there. Check it out. You see that? Yeah, so we'll, we'll take a... Oh yeah, a ton of water in there. I also just dropped a stick down in the tank. It's certainly water on the bottom of that. So we're gonna just bypass this. I tried cranking his top lead off and it just, uh, it broke right. You might be saying, hey, how do you know that's water and not diesel? I can just tell by looking at it. So can you probably in this, but if you ever aren't sure, just pour it onto a wick. I got some fiberglass right here and you can see it's barely soaking into it. Diesel will, will soak into stuff much easier and then, you know, give it a spark. Uh, some fire and that is not light on fire at all if it was diesel it would once you have a wick now diesel won't light on fire if you just pour it on like a sheet of glass it's not that volatile but a wick it will always light if it's good diesel if it lights and you see it popping and spattering that means you got water mixed in the diesel and this hose actually runs up to the back of the engine block probably to what's more than likely a pump back there and then to this one I guess we'll just drop the tank on the side here. Should have brought some more hose with me. I was just gonna grab that in a rush. Um, I got this one that I keep under here though. That ought to do it. Should probably tie this up. Bowling and a trucker hitch. That'll keep that from falling on the ground and dumping all my diesel out. Maybe put a cap on here too to keep the hose in place. All right, I want to take a quick minute and tell you about the sponsor of this video, Sunday. They're a subscription-based lawn care brand that uses your soil, climate, and satellite data to come up with a customized plan that's going to help you grow a green and luscious lawn. If you're like me and constantly driving vehicles over your grass, then you need to feed it and take care of it. Instead of trying to figure out what works and what doesn't work, why not let the experts over at Sunday give you some help? All you gotta do is type in your address and then you get a customized lawn care plan within seconds. Everything's then sent right to your doorstep, including a soil test kit. Hook it up to your garden hose, lay down some nutrients, sit back and you'll be competing with the greenest lawn on the street in no time. So if you wanna add convenience and take the guesswork out of lawn care, then head to getsunday.com slash no nonsense now and get 20% off using code no nonsense 20. That is unless you want your lawn looking like the box on this C70. Well, geez, that only took like 10 minutes to do the whole lawn. I feel accomplished. Now let's go wake this beast. And finally, the exciting moment of hearing this two-stroke diesel come back to life after sitting for 30 years. So stoked on this one. I just love old diesels. Let's do it. pretty exciting I, yeah, I've never actually had a runaway diesel in person but you guys heard her going I wouldn't really call that a, a runaway I, I think the rack was just probably stuck open I should have had a plan in order like a, a disc to throw over this intake luckily I had a tin can and a blanket so we were able to cap that off it was still getting air through this side right here uh, but you know and then you got the diesel jug attached to the truck and don't have it out in the middle of the, the field so you know, it just could have been that could have been really bad but let's look into why the throttle was stuck now. It runs good, hey, yeah, sounds good. First line of thinking is this pedal was super easy to press. Actually, now it doesn't want to, there, now it doesn't want to even go. 
there it is. So I'm thinking maybe somebody jammed it down and then it stuck the throttle. But that feels like I'm engaging something. Let's see, that comes right here. Actually, no, it's not. I pulled back, pulls this, and get some other cables. Got this thing's just kind of dangling in the wind. This cable, so I'll go up to see what these are. This one on the right, this goes here. Is this seized up? Nope. Okay, well then I don't I don't know why it was runaway as of right now. And before we go any further, I just want to touch on the terminology runaway diesel and I don't think that's what happened here because a true runaway diesel is when it starts running on uh, oil, which may be coming from a blown out seal on a turbocharger, which this doesn't have. I, I think the throttle is just stuck open on this or the throttle rack inside internally. Uh, but the only way to shut it off if you do have a true runaway diesel is covering the intake because you, you can't shut off a fuel supply. There's no ignition system on these things, it's diesel. And so that's what we did in this case. But another thing I should have checked before jumping into this is where the fuel shut off solenoid is. I assume it has a solenoid like my Cummins 12 valve or if so if that wasn't working I could manually push it let's go see if we can find one I'm gonna have to go with this being the fuel shut off which it doesn't have any cell noise just mechanical linkage um, but you guys reach your hand in there when this thing's red lining with <laughs> no thanks so loud too I was reading these Detroit's do have a secondary emergency shut off and a, it's a throttle flap on the intake I'm wondering if that's what this one probably is I would imagine so uh, there's there's other ways these can run away too like I was reading the seals can blow out on the supercharger and I even read one guy had a hydraulic hose blow on him He said the oil was shooting in the intake and caused it to run away. That sounds pretty scary Let's get these fuel shutoffs operating Be a probably good step Oh, all right <laughs> Pulled the whole darn cable through and it's pulling it a little bit, but not all the way back Oh man these hoses just broke right off. I assume that's the water pump down there. Look at that. <laughs> Might need new ones of those. Holy smokes. All right, there goes all the coolant. No, why did I do that? That's actually the heater core hose. Uh, against my better judgment, we're gonna fire this up one more time. He's gonna cover the intake in case it runs away again. I didn't really find any problems with the linkage, but let's see. Oh, you weren't even covering it. Oh, cool. All right, so I, all I did was smack the damn uh, throttle linkage with a hammer a few times. That might have loosened it up. Okay. And you, you didn't cover it, right? Yeah. And now it doesn't want to start up. Let's take this intake boot off. We're lucky with all that vacuum, this didn't just collapse in on itself. Rip open. It is reinforced with steel, but it's old. Now I can cover this intake up directly. You gotta remember, this, these diesels don't have a throttle flap. It's just wide open. So the more fuel you add, it'll just, it'll just take off. Since I believe the fuel pump lost its prime, I have a new setup here on gravity feed. Let's give this one more go. enough for now until I come up with another plan because I have to jump on cutting some trailers up in the back doing a separate video on that look how much fuel this drank with just those start attempts uh, yeah clearly a stock rack or just wide open fuel injectors on this I'm back here the next day kind of tinkering with this he's supposed to come at some point and drag it on out uh, but I did do a little bit more research and uh, it turns out that you know, what I did starting it up after sitting for a long time huge no-no with these because uh, this guy's, I think his name was Detroit Garage. I'll drop a link to his channel down below, but he had some good videos on these. And he said that when you shut them off, they go always go into the full fuel position. So you see this rack right here that I'm working. When these are pulled out, that's no fuel. When they're pushed all the way in, uh, that's the full fuel. And these get kind of gummy and sticky. This one's actually 
going all the way in though and these injectors are moving freely on this side i'm about to pop the other side so i'm guessing that means the injectors are just internally stock open because it's it's surely just dumping fuel but i'm gonna pop the other side off look at that and also i'm worried about what may have went in this horn because i'm smelling the air box over there it smells like a dead animal oh it smells terrible <laughs> Oh, it's an oil bath filter. Oh my God, with oh, a bunch of mice that have died in there. If you guys remember the U-Haul video, I didn't know what an oil bath filter was. And oh man, did people give me grief for that. Hilarious, but yeah, all these mice came down in there. Oh, it still smells terrible. What's going on here? What a way to go. So the, the mice came down here, dropped into an oil bath, and just couldn't get out. That's a mouse trap, is what it is. If I would have just taken a breather, look at that, I could have slipped in that area with the two nuts. I saw them, but I'm thinking, ah, oh, it's bolted from the back. It's really just a nice and genius design. It locks in here, take those, slide it up, pull it out. Oh well. It was certainly a lot harder to cut it. Tried to clean what dirt I could, but you'll have to excuse the mess. I'm noticing there's blue silicone all over these injector rails. Interesting. All right, so this side, is the rack stuck? No, it's, it's not stuck. So the injectors are stuck internally, I guess. It's obviously, yeah, it's in the full fuel position now, but when it starts, it should pull out. Taking a look at this, we can see each cylinder has three rockers. Everything's driven by the same cam in the middle and the ones on the outside are for the valve. It's got four valves per cylinder. And this middle one is the injector itself, which these are free when I push on this too. All six of them move, uh, except for this one, because that's depressed right now. Here's a look at the air compressor, it looks like, back behind. So this supercharger, I think is driven off a of gear on the backside too. Well, I don't plan on pulling injectors today, this is good. Uh, but we will try to start it just one more time and no no worry about Mice getting inside the, this horn because well you saw that had that screen there So if anything it dumped a bunch of oil in there But let's see if one Optima battery will do it fully charged up and the cables just vice uh, gripped on there Same deal as the other night, it's just dumping diesel. So unfortunately, talk to the scrap yard for this one. If you guys wanna see the valve train going, here you go. See, it's just dumping all that diesel soot out. So if I manually pull the rack back, I can uh, get it to fire, but then it's just not, not staying running. You saw that single Optima cranked her no problem though. And that'll wrap this video up. It's a shame we don't have more time with this. I'm sure one of you guys out there would love to buy this for scrap value and refurb it. If I had a farm, maybe, maybe I would, but I don't have the space for it. We did finally get her hooked up. The old C70 is making it down the road. Although the front wheels are dragging, but he doesn't have very far to go. Let's see how this turn is. Oh my gosh, guys. Susie, we're gonna call her Susie. Susie wanted to turn, but tow truck's got it. Heck yeah, job well done. That's your brother's here. Yeah, reunited. Oh, he says, I missed you. Where you been? This is Tucker. Uh, they are litter mates. <laughs> oh, Tucker's like shy because he's like, I don't know where I am. And <laughs> Gus is like, this is my place. What's up?
Well, for those of you guys that stuck around throughout the video, we have a more exciting end. Uh, first of all, check out this, this Brockway. What a beautiful farm truck. However, this 1987 International Lodestar 1850 has got the same 6V53 motor in it and i got permission from the the farm the you know farm owner here to to play around with it fire it up and take it for a little for a little spin and so i guess let's just show you what the truck's all about this has got a dump stake body holds 400 bushel if i got that right he was telling me a bunch of things need some tires it's got the, the tandem axle and a real heavy duty old old school truck it's actually for sale too if you if you're interested in making an offer on this let me know shoot me an email that's heavy coming down. He said he had this running last month as well, so shouldn't be a problem. I'm gonna pull this. This is the engine stop on it. And by the way, this has got the, the four-speed brownie box with a five-speed. Yep, when you pull that, that engages the shutoff. There's actually some bolts sitting up on the air filter. I'll remove those for now. I tossed an Optima battery in. Let's see if she fires up. That's this one runs away on me too. And here we go. Full fuel. Okay. Perfect. Oh, actually, it's running real smoky down there. There it goes. Yeah, it was. It was pulling a vacuum. Okay. So that, I just retracted the flapper, pushed that back, locked it in, and look at that. That must be what's wrong with this C70. Oh, man. See, because if you engage the emergency stop, it snaps that shut. And that's why I couldn't pull back when it was running, because it had vacuum. Oh, man. Such a simple thing. Now, let's fire this thing up. That's going to run a lot better. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. the fuel shut off right there but i wonder if on that c70 i'm working i bet you that's what happened i probably tripped it and i never reset it
that a jack? Wow, that thing's awesome. And then the warehouse, he's actually got a 453 sitting here, non-turbo. And then this old uh, 471 that he got for 50 bucks, which is geez, probably worth a lot more than that even in scrap. But perfect example to show you a stock rack. This is your throttle right here, which does move, but the rack, they're actually stuck midway. And I tried putting my pliers on there, I can't move that at all. You see this one's moving, but with this older style, if one of them gets seized up completely, then the entire rack is stuck. The later ones actually have like a breakaway system, so if one gets stuck, just that cylinder gets stuck. But yeah, this is, uh, that, that rack is, is seized up. You would wanna fix that first <laughs> before starting it. This Rockway's got the 290 Cummins in it. Well, I gotta say, that was extremely nice of him to let me shoot some video on the International Lodestar. Hopefully you guys found that a little entertaining. I really enjoyed it, uh, hanging out with him. He's a cool dude. And believe it or not, this saga is gonna continue because I'm now on the way back to the C70 where it's still in, intact. And we're gonna see if that uh, emergency shut off is tripped or not. I'm thinking it definitely is. Let's find out. Well, next day we're back here with Susie where she lay at her final resting ground. And we're gonna find out about that emergency stop. Look at this tire, this completely blew apart on our way home. Got the hood already popped. And look at that, as I thought, unbelievable rookie move. <laughs> Can't believe I was trying to start it with that still tripped. I mean, it's just one of those things that you don't know until you know, and when you know, it's like, how, how did I overlook that? But now we know, so let's reset that, and we'll see if she wants to fire, whether maybe those racks loosened up. I mean, you guys heard it start the second time. I don't know if that was tripped by then, and it seemed to be idling. Let's just find out. We got the block of wood handy this time, and we have full access to shut everything off. Box got a little mangled. Got her all rigged, emergency shut off retracted. Let's give it a go. Hopefully uh, it's not a stuck governor or something. Like I said before, I was hitting the back of there, tapping it with a hammer, seeing if maybe, let's find out. I had to push it, push it the rest of the way down. Took a long break, let her cool down. I'm gonna start it one more time, see if it goes in gear. I, I don't think that clutch was actuating properly. Let's find out. Yeah, it goes in the gear, but won't engage because the clutch is just either wiped out or the linkage is seized up, but. And that'll finally be the wrap up on this video. I know we had a bunch of false endings. Uh, maybe gonna buy this engine off him if he pulls it out, depending on what he wants. Uh, you know, originally this whole truck was actually gonna be just cut up and brought to the scrapyard. He didn't think the engine ran at all. And of course, now that it does, he uh, is probably gonna try to sell it. Uh, so uh, depending on what he wants for it, I might end up buying it off him just because it would be really cool to throw this in, uh, I don't know, maybe the Tundra or some other kind of project. 
but it was fun tinkering learned a lot and that's what it's all about learning having fun making mistakes along the way and not getting uh, too caught up in and now i'm rambling again so hopefully you guys enjoyed it and i hope to see you in another video see ya